So when we last left everybody, you had actually just left Archtown um, after doing some humanitarian efforts as well as reconstructing essentially the entire town in order to become a new trading outpost for the Missouri River Runner route. Our story is going to pick up early in the morning the next day. The night was long, but variably uneventful. The infected that our uh, Archtown is so used to kind of poking in and around as parts of the night did keep you guys on edge a little bit because you could clearly hear the scratching of various claws and the poking around as if dogs seem to just be sniffing around an interesting place. But Archtown is so used to it at this point um, that they slept through it. So your morning begins with essentially uh, the doors, the new double doors that you have converted in order to make sure that the train can come in and through. You can see that as you're about to, as you push the rail driver through successfully through Archtown and through the other way uh, on this tiny, tiny little stone column that barely, barely has any real, real estate in this world, but meant so much to these people who are in this area. You kind of have a small um, farewell committee that's kind of seeing you out, Aww. essentially, Not you. as they watch you. <laughs> It's for us. I made the deal! <laughs> All right. Uh, but you can see Bear, Sarah, Tim, and a lot of everybody else. Tim's actually feeling well enough that he could get out of bed this oh, morning. Good job, kid. Um, is, that is, he's... Cranky, is Cranky Old Lady there? Uh, cranky Old oh Lady? You want to look for her? I'm kind of looking for her in the crowd. Yeah, she's there. Okay. She's way in the back. Okay. She's kind of sitting no. there, and somehow she managed to get the rocking chair outside. <laughs> <laughs> She's still out there with the rocking chair. Okay. So I, ma I make eye contact with her. Uh, I go up there and I pull out my camping, small camping solar panel mm. charger, mm. and I put that out, and I plug my iPod Nano. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about this guy. He's always thinking about what's important. Yeah. <gasps> have you been listening to it a lot this trip so far? These guys probably haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I have a, an ancient relic of the old world. <laughs> I always Nano. thought he was just ignoring us. You have headphones there? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the hair's for. Sometimes headphones. Hair. <laughs> you talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Is it one of those elf ear ones? Yeah. Yes. So keep it about. Oh. Great. Well, um, right. it's probably going to just take a single time for you to get enough of a charge. To okay. Be able to get into it. I'm uh, scrutinizing the map and radioing information back to uh, back to Yatley and back to the company. Okay, great. In Missouri. Uh, that's an excellent point. So, it, it, you want to do you want to gather any information at this point, or you just want to report in? I'm reporting Archtown. Yeah. Um, and besides that, not much of note has occurred. Yeah. Fair enough. So, <clears throat> all right. So you radio into Yatley, who is uh, excited that you have already <laughs> established. A, a small but reasonable trade station on this route yeah. already. Um, and they'll make sure that along the way that someone goes, a representative comes in to be able to provide them some extra support since they have essentially, you have essentially said that from there to Archtown is at least secured. <clears throat> All right? And make sure to inform the athlete that we've made the deal to yeah. allow them first pickings, but to make that available inventory extremely slim yeah. when bringing the initial packages through. Sure. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to spend some time with Lucky Jenny. Yeah. Uh, it has occurred to me that while we were trying to get everything started and things like that, that you're the only one that knows how to drive this thing. So if you don't mind kind of sharing how this works, not that I don't value you. Yes. And I know that we can trust each other, but you can just show me some of the basic ropes in case you're needed. I can out. drive it on a basic level. I built the thing. Go talk to your radio. I'm done. It was quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, just show me the ropes so I can help out. Yes. It's really not that hard. Get out of here. Oh. <laughs> I can take him from right here. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually spend quite a bit of time traveling uneventfully. Uh, I'd say it gets to be about midday, early midday, before you start to see that you're coming into a township. Mm -hmm. All right? And on your map, you can tell that this is the city of Eureka that you're getting close to. Hmm. This part of the world is completely foreign. It's so far outside of the kill zone, and it's theoretically outside of the greater metropolitan of St. Louis. So while a lot of the residential community of St. Louis held back some parts of nature, it was just a speed bump that it had to basically move over. 
a lot of this outer region is in dense vegetation. But now that tree line very abruptly ends and you start to see wide expanse of open field. Plenty of cover here. How are we looking on wood supply? Oh, nasty, yeah. You've burnt a little more than half at this stage. Okay. You know? <clears throat> well, just putting this out there, but if we do want to stop to refuel, mm. since we are able to collect dead wood or chop trees and dry them, since that's an option, yeah. we may not want to stop in a town. Well, let's do it. Where yeah. we stop. have tons yeah, 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 yeah. of infected. Yeah. Okay, Break. so this is now breaking. <laughs> <laughs> little, little warning with yeah. the good guys, thank you. So sounds like um, both Ray and Jenny are going to be cutting as much foliage as they can mm -hmm. while Wraith, in particular, is making sure that he picks out the best wood. And I think I'd probably do like a walk, a sort of brief, you know, like five minute walk, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a certain distance out from the, the rail driver. Right. Just to make sure that we're not like near like a hive mm -hmm. or any, stuff like that. So okay. I'm, I'm looking for any signs of infected or any of that kind of thing. Band-Aid, peering through the binoculars, the, the magnifying focus on these glass lenses isn't like amazing, mm -hmm. but it is enough that you can definitely go and look into the city and it's extremely quiet. It looks abandoned, honestly. Oh, okay. It looks like there may have been a community there at one point, but it is. Does it look overgrown or it burnt? Looks, or? It looks overgrown, it doesn't look burnt. Uh -huh. It just looks abandoned. Okay. It's what's important. And um, it really, it, it's a ghost town. Okay, So. good to know. Mm -hmm. I you like can also see that the train does uh, make some very unique turns. I get, I get Wraith. It's, it's weird, but I get Wraith. I get Ray. What's, what's Band-Aid's deal? I'm getting this attitude. This profile, and I get it, I'm the newbie. I get, I, you guys, you're all, you've been working together, and that's great, but uh, is it me? Like, what is going on? What is his problem? Look, we've all seen some shit. <clears throat> And you haven't. And so it's hard to, I don't know, it's hard to relate to you. And we think it's hard for you to relate to us. Now, I can't speak for Band-Aid. If you, you want to know something, then you're going to have to ask him. I'm going to need, earned or not, them to respect me too, even only for the sake of this mission. So these are your guys. This is your your team, and I'll do what I can, but I need some backup in here. I can't have the entire group just finding any way to get under my skin. <laughs> it's not so gonna So listen, work. I'm just gonna cut to the chase here because Jenny doesn't know us as well, and certainly doesn't know Band-Aid as well as I do, but doesn't know the rest of us that well. It's not our respect you need, it's our trust. Now you built up a lot of it back there with what you did in Archtown. That was good. We yeah. didn't think. But that right there, that, that smug little bastard moment, that right there is gonna keep us from respecting you. You are cresting over a hill as kind of Asher is beginning this next kind of defensive tactic to talk about what is going on <laughs> with his ability. And as you crest over, you actually look down to see white. A pile of bones. That seems to be five feet, six feet high, and it's laid out almost as if a field of bodies maybe decades ago was laid out there, but all it is now is just some kind of makeshift graveyard of bodies that have laid out either before the war, maybe this was an old hive in which the bodies were collected beforehand, but the thing that stops you, Asher, is you kick a skull as it tumbles down the hillside and cracks along the side of this sea of bones. How far are we talking here? Like, what's the scope of this? We're talking 150 feet by maybe 100 feet. Of just like a five foot deep pile of bones. Three. Oh, uh, well, no, it was laid out. Uh. I mean, there may have been small crest of bones in some point, but you found 100% a mass graveyard of probably thousands of people. All very old looking. I wanna walk right up to it, I'm super interested. Yeah. It's very clear that it is a mass graveyard that maybe at one point, well who knows why thousands of bodies were deposited here. But they're here, and they are old. 
We've got wood. I think we're good. <laughs> I'm down to head back to the rail driver and we can pick this all up inside. That's cool with everybody. And let's do it quietly. These were placed here by other men, uh, not the infected. It's organized, ritualistic, as if they were brought here and disposed of en masse. They may, some of them may be infected before they turned, but this was done with urgency. Wonderful. <laughs> That's great. What are we just talking about? I, no, I want to fucking leave. <laughs> so as you're continuing to pick up speed, move the rail driver through, <clears throat> you start to see as the small bits of the last refuge of this topiary, this tall forest that um, spoke to you of calming, peaceful woodland life, minus the bones, um, is now open to a wide, open plains land with this small ghost town that is essentially uh, sitting on the outskirts. And the first thing that you all feel, and you kind of mentioned it earlier, is just immediately exposed. Yeah. It's like you can like about this. pretty much see several miles in every direction um, without a lot of break the hills, uh, not barely even a rise. <clears throat> um, at the same time, uh, it's very clear that a lot of the grass in which there is parts of grass still around is dried out and it is still standing pretty tall, not as high as the waste stuff that you were experiencing with the overgrowth and ferns by Archtown, but this is like true Long grass. Eureka comes upon you through the right. Can we, can I hear some of your music? It's just been a long time. <laughs> can we like share earphones? If you, it's too personal, I understand. You but. didn't like it last time I tried to share it with yeah, you. Yeah, but I, it's been a while, and so <laughs> I feel like my tastes have refined, and I understand you more, and this will help. Okay. What okay. do I hear when I, just it's the left one or whatever? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like, it's really uh, screechy, like Norwegian black metal, like growly metal. stuff. <laughs> but then Norwegian sometimes it definitely. stops and opens up, and it's and it's got like weird sort of folk instruments and things I like, like that. that. Part. Yeah, yeah, nice. um, yeah. And then there's like weird sort of choir sort of things in the back. It sounds like just it sounds super like apocalyptic. Mm. Yeah, that's a good term for it. Yeah, uh, Stingray and Asher, as you're looking out to Eureka, you suddenly start to see small bits of movement coming out from parts of the town. You can actually see a couple of bodies moving out. I'd like to call down to Jenny. <clears throat> what speed are we at? 25. All right, we have movement out in the town. Right, and as you continue to observe, you actually watch as more bodies start spilling out through parts of the town. Spilling how sounds infected. How are they, yeah, how are they moving? <laughs> yeah. They are, at first, you can kind of see that they're just kind of like stepping out like they're, like as if someone heard a gunshot and they walked out to kind of see what the noise is all about. Uh -huh. But after a beat or two of that, you can start them just see crouch and run as fast as they can. And you can start to see these little ants of people just starting to pour out from different parts of the town as slowly a wave of running, fully prepared, just jumping. Some of them even just doing small, kind of like, like a rabbit as if it's with skipping down parts of the prairie as they just start barreling straight towards the rail driver with full Max speed, speed is what? Max speed is 35. 35. 35. With okay. coal, 55. With coal, 55. Uh, I don't copy. know if we want to go that fast. Yeah, and what's the safest? We don't want, we're alive frontier right, we Eureka need... drift here. It's yeah. like, <laughs> what about, what about uh, multi-track drifting? The last thing you want is to go coal, off the but tracks. Yeah, 35, yeah. Or 45. Absolutely. I was just about to say, I, I immediately, Switch to coal, switch and to I coal. I start like pushing. Shovel that faster! Yeah, I'm I'm trying. I can't tell if it's the, the music or what's this something. <laughs> Band aid, ah. pull that out. Help me shovel coal. Okay. Yeah. We have a wave incoming, and you will see it is indeed a wave, and actually parts of the uh, white tall grass is now contrasted from these black shapes that now seem to be pushing through as you can conjure this image of just predators who are just like a pack of wolves just running with full board. Can now. I run down and get her gun? Her AK-47? Yes. Absolutely. All right. Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see that some of them, as you're the ones that first started to see you, are now making a hard bend as they are uh, uh, basically trying to now 
cut off the rail driver as they see that they're now ahead and they're basically running alongside. Can only to one person can shoot out of this thing at a time. Yes. Okay. Unless you want to open the side door. No. No. <laughs> no. You're now basically ramping this thing up with coal. Yeah. And I'm checking the safety valves. Everything's looking good. Yeah, right? everything's looking fine. So you can watch as these creatures just start, and you can start to hear them a little bit now, and they have this weird, very unique call. At this point, I see that, I, that the crow's nest has got these two in them, right? And they're getting ready to shoot. She's shooting. There's not a lot of room. Driving fuel. Driving fuel. There's nothing we can do. Make sure I, things I are secure. I take my extra, uh, uh, ear earbud thing that you gave me, and I put it in, and I crank up the volume, <laughs> and I pull out my sword, and I start sharpening it. Oh God! Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and I start strapping shit down. Yes, Why not? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Band Aid and Jenny, you watch as Asher just like <clears throat> reaches over and shuts your door, <clears throat> and then shuts his own door and pulls the bar down. And so flies. right now, me, uh, Ray, and Wraith mm -hmm. are locked in the back compartment. Yes, and they're Jenny in the front. and Band Aid locked in the actual <clears throat> engine compartment. Yes, Jenny. If you don't mind me saying, you barely, you're checking your valves, you're looking at everything, yeah. you're making sure everything's fine. You almost missed the one most important valve, which is the steam pressure. And you can see as it's shaking itself along the red line before you finally pull the exhaust out on it and you watch as the spout just <laughs> as white gas and black smoke just pour out through the top of the rail driver as you just hear it as it's basically breathing a giant sigh of relief as you almost let this thing just... You pulled the throttle out always, but it got too hot and you had to release all that steam. How we doing in there? Oh, no, we're hanging in there. Great. We're hanging in there. All right. I like the instruction manual out like. <laughs> <laughs> it's falling apart. <laughs> Got a nice steam. A binder. You can watch as these creatures are continuing. You can see that some of them are starting to run alongside of the rail driver. They almost sound like demented rabbits. All right, so stage. let me play with this gun. So you can see as you watch four of them, as just you basically just unload a clip, and basically part of a clip, not a full clip, sorry, but you use the gun, and you watch as a couple of sprays, just four of them just kind of just start tumbling as they rolled back down. And one of them looks like it just got poof, just knocked back from the force of the, uh, of the bullet uh -huh. and just kind of flocking down. But you watch as more of them just continue to kind of like take their place as they continue to ride up. Okay, cool. Great, so Jenny, you're basically pulling this thing and as you can feel is this smoke billow up, yeah, you've got little, little a little damage. bit of, uh, of the, you've got your max speed and you can kind of see a lot of them are starting to slowly kind of pass behind you as you're maintaining a much quicker speed than even they can do at the moment. But more importantly, you're kind of feeling it, just the weight move a little bit as it's starting to go into these sidewinder curves a little bit. And you can see some more horatious looking ones up ahead. So at this speed, you can start to feel the weight adjust and shift. Okay. But you're, you've got clear warning now that okay. they're not gonna get easier. All right. I'm, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Right. Because the last thing I want is for this to tip. Right, so we're pulling it back. Agreed. I pull it back. All right. <clears throat> How fast do you think they're going? Uh, well, it seems like we're losing them, and what are we at now? Uh, we're at, um, we're at 40. Yeah. We're at 40. I'm gonna Four, pull um, us back to 35. You tell me if they start to gain on us at any point. All right, I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, I think that'll be a safe bet. Okay. And can we? Not rock it anymore? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 I'm cool. working on that. <laughs> Band-Aid, as you're looking through the side of this door, you can actually see as some of the creatures, as she's starting to slow down, they are starting to lose, but you actually do hear at one point a large thud as yeah. the top <sighs> of the rail driver essentially had something just a land bike cart? right on top of it on the sleeper cart. On the sleeper cart. You can feel it, Wog, so you three absolutely can just feel it. Something just lands right And I can see it from where I am, no? Well, uh, yes, because you're yeah, up in the top of the robots. Yeah, yeah. You can actually see as a pair of hands just <laughs> grasp a hold of the top of the rail driver as it starts to see its claws just peeling. It's like hanging top. over the edge? It's hanging over the edge. We need to clear the outside of the rail driver of infected. Mm -hmm. Okay. A firebomb might be a quick way to do that. I'm I'm in a Molotov kind of mood. You want to make some firebombs with me? Let's do it. Let's making do a firebomb. <laughs> All right. Both okay. of you are making bombs. <laughs> oh my God! You guys are. Oh my God! 
So as you see these hands are just scraping along the top oh, of the Lord. rail driver, you can start to hear as bodies are pulling themselves up. Running. So you're basically, you fired it into it, and you basically tried to fire into the creature that was sitting on top of trying to pull itself up. Uh -huh. yeah. But um, the rail driver was designed to be bulletproof. So you're watching yeah. it just like, you're just watching a spray of your uh, bullets are basically just hands, trapped right? was coming like, off. Yeah, and you're not, it's not letting go at all nice. at this stage. Okay. So, uh, Mandane. Right. You said that there are some <clears throat> that are rather voracious. Yes. I wanna uh, cross check that with the database in my head of mm -hmm. like, what am I looking at here? Like kind of assess. You are seeing something unique, for sure. You've so never, I haven't seen this no. before. The fact that they're running on all fours, like okay. the way they're and they're kind of pack-like. And it's weird to kind of see them move. Like, they're not just running in a way that's like haphazard, like they're trying to get over each other. They're doing coordinated movements like mm -hmm. this. And it's pretty terrifying. You're coming across an incline when a canyon slowly coming up in front of you. So, but there is also, you can see a small bridge in which there's like a road. We went through Eureka and they're coming You're coming through us. Eureka. If I may paint this portrait in your head. Yes, please. You can watch as you're basically moving along. Imagine Eureka's to your right, all right? As you're moving the rail driver along the township and the people are coming out. All of the infected are running across and you're moving forward and they're trying to catch up with you. And gotcha. there is a r whole kind of canyon that the rail driver is cutting through at gotcha. the moment into the bottom. So if they catch up with it, okay. And they're yeah, coming yeah. along the side and they're hopping on the back and you're firing from the back right, of your right, pillbox right. at the moment. So unless they catch up, I won't see behind me. Exactly. Okay. So. So I'm I'm going to be relaying a lot of this up to Jenny. Yeah. Uh, everything that I'm seeing, including the upcoming canyon that we're going to be going through, is it only this new type that has been following us? The, the yes. pack. These these pack creatures. Okay. I don't yeah. see the other types mm -hmm. of infected. Okay. If they would, they'd be running. They mm -hmm. wouldn't be running on all fours like these ones are. Right. But I didn't, wasn't sure if if they were mingled the or yeah. 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 So you can tell, at even uh, 35 miles an hour, you are slowly, but still steadily losing them. Mm -hmm. But their endurance seems, well, unhuman. Yeah. But they, while they don't seem to be slowing down because they're getting tired, they do seem to be slowing down because you are going just a little too fast for them. But you can also see at this stage, the ones that are running alongside of you, you can start to see that other ones have triangulated and have basically cut across from their parts so that they are actually running ahead of you. Mm -hmm. They're like coming from somewhere else. Coming okay. from more parts of Eureka, you can actually <laughs> see ones that are cutting uh, a triangulating position, we're running back. in front of you. They're not running towards you, mm -hmm. they're running in front of you, mm -hmm. knowing kind of where you're going to land by the time well, they Well, we did there. design the train kind of with that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, it has yeah. kind of like a snowplow yeah. sort of thing on the front yeah. of it, right? Yeah. It has a, it has a cattle guard. I'm just going to call yeah. down to yeah. the guys and be like, guys, we need something bigger. This isn't working. <laughs> uh, and then for the last bits, uh, I just want to see how far I can see ahead with the canyon. Is it, does it look like it's kind of a straight shot, or does it look like there's a curve coming up? or any It's sort hard of to tell. You okay. can see that the track's in front of you. You can see the canyon, because you are definitely, at this point, I'm imagining Band-Aid sticking his head out of the front of the... Yeah. Uh, of the car where he can get out a little bit like through the window and the wind is just rushing Goggles into his on. face. Goggles on as the wind is just blowing right through him as he's <laughs> looking up through the canyon. And he, you can see the rack, the track uh, for sure and it's kind of hard to tell where it goes after that but it doesn't seem to be a straight shot, no. Okay. It's definitely at some point there's gonna be turns. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm relaying all this information uh, okay. and uh, I think we're at a good speed right now. We're ahead of their, their uh, movement but it seems like they're going to be coming in from the top. They, we had people that are infected that were in front of us, and they're running up to set something up. They're working in a pack mentality. You know, this is—it's very strange, but it seems like uh, somebody, some is someone is in charge. So, uh, yeah, that's what we got. Also, there's a turn coming up. Okay. So, <laughs> race, race for impact. Look. What? Look. Here's the thing. If they start coming in uh -huh. here. You need to hold on to this throttle and maintain our speed, and then I can try and take care of the infected. Because okay, and you're armed? Yes, I have a machete, and I got my pistol with me. Here, so. why don't you take my pistol and use both of them. Okay. And then I'll uh, keep an eye out for this. 
Uh, as the rail driver continues barreling down the side of Eureka, you continue to see as infected are just pouring out and the pack that's running alongside of you is maintaining and looking and you can see through there that at least a couple of them are looking up and down trying to find the best way to get into it. Knowing that they've seen a couple of bullets come down, you can see a couple of them are veering to be able to try to catch up, but only really another one is able to make the dramatic leap in order to kind of clang onto the back of the rail driver again as a couple of other ones attempted to do so but just tumbled as they miss their mark ever ah. so lightly. But there's, you can see as there's one at least because you can feel the weight of the, of the sleeper car kind of pull down a little bit as the other one crawls up to the top and now it basically peers its head up on the side about five feet away. I see him pop his head up and I go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> And I shoot him in the in the face. And you watch as basically it just uh, it's just right there as it just scrapes a hand down, and you can actually watch as it like carves this. a large rake into the side of the uh, rail car as that it falls one down. Ugly and motherfucker! Down, God. You know. Yeah. It there. It does not have any human hardly. In fact, you, as you looked at its wide milky eyes, you can actually see that uh, it's the eye sockets that were holding onto its eyes are about fifty percent bigger than uh, what you uh, originally would imagine a human to have, as almost as if like its eyes were larger than what you and I would look like. It's down, it is rolling, you can hear it, you can hear its fall as it's coming across. At this point, you watch as the rail driver continues to pull through the canyon and you can start to hear dum -dum, dum -dum, boom, boom, yep, as more bodies continue to slam down as you watch at pulling your head across, you can see several of them are just making a leap onto the top of the rail driver at this stage. The wind pursing against them and some of them stumbling and literally falling off the rail driver because the wind is just too much for them. But a lot of them just barreling down, pulling their nails and their feet, their clawed feet into the actual steel of the sleeper car. As you can hear it, as the metal's being pulled across it, you at least have another four that hopped on top of there at this stage. I mean, I think it's a good time. I, to open the hatch while they're all on the car? We only need to open it that much. You roll out one Molotov. And then they get their little grubby fingers in there. And I'm gonna slam it right back down. Things. Jesus. Race opening the hatch. Guys, do something fast. Now I'm just gonna crack it open. Slightly. Yeah, got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stuck back here with Rafe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm light. back here with Rafe. I'm lighting one of his uh, Molotovs oh, first. Ah, okay. You wanted to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, can't, I can't believe I wish we had Band-Aid right now. Will you stop right talking now. and do something? Rafe, I am gonna open the door, throw it out, and slam it. Rafe, you're going to roll this thing up. You're gonna roll the Molotov out. Unfortunately, as it rolls, the creatures kind of see the fire and just dart out of the way as it tumbles off the side of the rail driver and explodes into a fireball behind you as the, the, as the rail driver continues to move forward. So it just kind of splashes into nothing on the side of the rails. As you see, one of the creatures, the one that was on top that wasn't shot off by Ray, but the one that's on the bottom, you can actually start to hear the tearing of metal. Hey, excuse me. And Asher, right behind you, you can hear as as you look behind him, you can actually see like a sardine can, the slow parts of the metal slowly the being reeled up behind the rail driver as an arm reaches out and grabs the back of your leg and pulls you down. Huh? Oh no. Ooh. After my previous experience with that ugly abomination, uh, I just start screaming, what are these things? What are these things? What are these things? <laughs> and spraying and just like focus, 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 focus as each one of their heads just kind of explodes and they fly yes. off the side of the rail drive. It's, ah. it's just the, the, between just the head shots and just the mid body shots, you just watch as <laughs> even if you didn't kill them from the body shots themselves, just the sheer force of being hit by this caliber bullet is enough to knock them <laughs> as they just tumble off the side of the rail driver, clearing everything on top of it. You can start to feel like as you go into the turn, Jenny, as you're coming out of the canyon, you start to kind of see as this first turn is a slow kind of 15 degree turn around and you can feel that it's definitely, everyone's leaning a little bit. So you watch it <laughs> as she's leaning into the turn, she's kind of starting to move a little bit. And you can I, narrate it for me. Uh, yeah, and I, I just come up behind you and I'm like, I got you, I got you, and we're gonna steady this out. So, uh, I mean, how open, how much space is there in this thing that's peeled open? It is peeled up to about waist height. Okay. You know? And 
is how much of this guy is sticking through it. His arm is on his leg, yes. right? So you can so see that basically half his body is in half there. Half his body is in there as it's pulled out. And you can see several yeah. other ones that are running on the tracks that seem to be nipping at the heels of the rail driver as well, oh, too. You pull, you basically, as you slam down onto the ground after this thing is pulled on you and yunk, just gave you a yank, almost sliding. You can hear your tack back kind of squeak along the bare metal <clears throat> a little bit as you uh, originally had it lined up, but just the jolt of being pulled so drastically, you just fire and you kind of just hit it along the side of its shoulder, which is not the one it's holding on to you at the moment. So I reel back uh, with my uh, with my Viking blade, <laughs> and, I, and I chop through its arm just above the elbow. Right, and blood The one that's gripping him. Just squirts out, kind of covering Asher's yep. legs a little bit. And I did that with enough force I knew. that it, so it makes him kind of fall over a bit. Yes. And I lean back and I kick his shoulder with my foot yes. to shove him out through the opening of the, uh, of the rail drive. <laughs> As it yeah. scrapes with one last like claw as it comes out, if it's last remaining mm -hmm. arm, you kind of watch as it peels a little bit of metal with it. Mm -hmm. As <laughs> bonus, it hits a couple of the other uh, infected that mm -hmm. it was nipping on the back of it. And you watch as they kind of tumble through the small uh, pier that you have. But still, there's still a few more on the heel. Okay. So great. Then that goes all the way down to Ray. Um, I come down to see this extravagant display, and I scream, shut your eyes, shut your mouth, and I grab him and pull him back yes. onto the car okay. and start wiping off with any piece of cloth I can find, wiping stuff off of anything that is exposed on him. Got it. Uh, Jenny, as you took the turn a little bit too much, maybe it's too slow. Maybe you're actually just starting to feel it as it's starting to come up a little bit. Get on the other side! Okay. Band-Aid. You jump over and try to spot the lean, and Wraith, Bandit, everyone just kind of gets onto the top and just try to put down as much as they possibly can. And there's actually even no infected that are currently on the rail driver at the moment. And you're still just coming out to the very last bit of the canyon, and Bandit, you can actually see out. You can start to see where the, the rolling hills that are kind of like barricading you on either side of it are starting to, we're in about half a football field, going to come down and then back out into the prairie lands but the walls are actually pretty closely tight to you at this stage, the walls of dirt. And the leaning that you had to get into, you can actually start to hear the and you can feel it start to vibrate as it's leaning against the rock and dirt wall of the side canyon. And you can actually start to feel as parts of it, the rail, the mountain bikes, parts of the things that were mounted onto her just being pulled off of the rail driver okay. with immense amount of veracity. So I'd like to, I move myself over to the upside mm -hmm. to plant myself grabbing the side, like a bit of strap, uh, like the canvas straps and yeah. stuff on the side of the wall. And then she's also holding on to me, so I'm gonna grab onto her to try and brace us both against the good side yes. of the train. Band-Aid, huh? I need you to do something for me. Uh, what? I need you to... <laughs> I need you to climb out this window, and I need you to put all your strength and lean the opposite way. Okay, physics, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> physics. Let's do it. So I'm, I go over to the, the door, and I'm like fidgeting with the lock mechanism or whatever, trying to get it open, and because like we're against the canyon wall, there's plenty of space over there. Yes. So the door that I'm opening like flings open yes. with, the, with the wind, and I just kind of step back and do a running jump and grab onto like the, like a, I'm expecting like some sort of bar yeah. above yeah. it and like swing out. Like, like. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. If, if I can, I want to like wall, wall run. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm just like, in my, my mind, I'm like, no way am I going to lean because there's nothing to lean against. So I need right. to make like pendulum motion. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. So you're just making a big swinging kind of like flat. Yeah, and like almost. using my core muscles to like. Your weight <laughs> out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that helps slow down a little bit too because you're making a little drag. Sure. With the door as well. Yeah. Wraith. Well, the floor is slightly angled in here. These two have their, their back pressed up against the side of the door. Yeah. And I just basically do kind of like, I unlatch the door. Yeah. And let it just sit there, and the wind is kind of banging it a little bit. Yeah. And then I just kind of run up to it, like there's only a tiny bit of space from, yes. from side to side. Yes. So I push out and I grab onto the bar so the door flings open like this. Yeah. And I, with my centrifugal force, fly just out with it, and the side. door just slams back against itself so that I'm hanging from, again, 
like he is from the side of the, like but I'm on the side of the, uh, yeah. the the carriage, yeah. basically. Doing so the same both thing. of you, you and can... I see him. And he's like, I see, hey, I see him. I, see him. <laughs> I kinda I start laughing. Basically, no! and, I and as you both are kind of tipping, you can kind of hear the wheels squeaking as the rumbling of the dirt continues to kind of get into it. And this whole span is about maybe 10 or 15 seconds of just feeling this thing just run up against it. And as you both are just pulling onto it and pulling onto it as hard as you can, you can feel as the train starts to slow down, it's just and then it and you can actually feel as all the stuff that was inside of the sleeper car that wasn't um, ratcheted down or anything just kind of like lifts and watches just kind of scatters. No, I didn't take a turn to strap as much everything so I could down. So all the vitals are fine. This okay. is mostly just the loosey goosey <coughs> right, cool. stuff. So including your butts. And the remaining sunshine. <laughs> My butts are loosey goosey. <laughs> yes. And as it dum, 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 settles in, seconds go by before the canyon just whoo, comes out from on the side of you and you can start to see the open plains ahead of you and the infected, the prairie dogs that were essentially running behind are now trailed and seem to be off and away at this stage. <sighs> that went so good. <laughs> ah! I swing back in and the door closes and I pull out my earbuds. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm still focused on getting you cleaned up. Yeah, he has sustained an open wound. All right, well, Jenny, the train's still going, but now that it's leveled out, you can hear it's not, it's not sounding as smooth as it was before you first went into Eureka. You can hear that there's a lot of still metal grinding on itself in the rail driver as you're continuing to move at the 30 miles an hour pace that you're uh, continuing to go through. Just so. for the record, I came back in and shut the door. Right, <laughs> okay, thank you, duly yep. noted. So, um, do you wanna keep driving for a little while? Yeah, kinda, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Like, yeah. we're not, we're not gonna be going super fast, but I want us to keep moving, so we put lots of distance between us and Eureka. Okay. So pick up the pace, I guess, yeah. That's fine, you can go back to your 35. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, if you've got this covered, I'm gonna go back and see how yes, bad the damage is right there. So I'm gonna open the locked door on our cart and then start banging on the locked door that I can't get into in the sleeper cart. I go over and I, I open up the, the bar and let him in. <laughs> Come back here like, hey, <laughs> get to see you on this side. Band-Aid, I need you. Okay. So I'll head straight over to, okay. what do I see when I come into the, the sleeper cart? Um, oh, you see, like, you see uh, him on the, ground. on the ground. In the back, like towards the back door. And you can see the peeled up part of the rail driver that was lifted up in the very end as well too. And you can see Ray kneeling next to um, Asher at the moment. Jesus, all right. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'll come right over. It squeezed my leg through my clothes, uh -huh. through the armor. Uh -huh. This is all I can feel, I don't know what's, I'm not looking but I can feel the blood pooling all down here. Did it do that, pointing to it the did, back? It did that. It peeled up the fucking metal. I do know. Like a can of cat food. I do know. What do you know? That's not your blood. Well, let's do something about that. 